What's up gamers, in this video I'm going to be unboxing and testing the R36S game console. This one has really grabbed the attention of a lot of people because at $40 to $50 less than other consoles in its weight class with similar specs, is this too good to be true? Let's get into it. One of the first and funniest things about this is that we don't know who makes it. It's just literally from the company known as Game Console, I guess. Other than that, there's no real name on here. But based on the back, we do know that it's running on a Rock 3326 quad-core processor. It has one gig of RAM, a three and a half inch IPS display that is 640 by 480. It supposedly has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.2. It's also said to support systems up to PSP, Dreamcast, Nintendo DS, Nintendo 64, and everything underneath those with a 3200 milliamp battery. However, based on other things I've read and seen, I'm not sure that this actually has Wi-Fi, so just be weary of that. We'll see if we can get it to connect here in a minute. Seeing as you can pick this up on places like AliExpress for $40 sometimes. This is a really nice box. I will give them that. It's got some nice art on it and it's designed very well. It has a really nice retro aesthetic to it. Let's open it up. It does come with a screen protector. It also has a charging cable, user manual, and wipes to clean your screen before you apply the screen protector. We'll deal with that later. And for the grand reveal, shing. Wow. Okay. Well, you know what? This is a pretty nice translucent purple. I don't hate it. It's nice that it has a removable back and battery if you can get it open without ripping your fingernails off. First impressions here, it doesn't feel too bad. These buttons are definitely uh, smaller. They're smaller than like an Ambernic device. That's a pretty loud click there in the middle. The D-pad doesn't feel terrible. It's a little sharp. The edges are a little jagged, like they're pointy. Playing fighting games or trying to hit those diagonals a lot might be a little uncomfortable. Joysticks feel, they feel a little cheap. They feel kind of, I don't know, thin or something or like, I don't know. Thin might be the best way to describe it. It feels like there's not much heft or weight to them. They just kind of are there. Uh, probably not going to be the greatest strength of this device. Moving around the edges here, we have a power button, a reset button, a TF2 slot, for your game card. We have a USB-C port for charging and a USB-C port for a second controller as well as a three and a half millimeter headphone jack. On this side you have your TF1 slot for your operating system and your volume rocker. These all feel pretty good. This one did come with a 32 gigabyte card, just a generic TF card with the operating system on it. It also came with a 64 gigabyte TF card with the games on it. Again, just generic. Those cards probably won't hold up over time and you would want to consider replacing them as soon as possible. I know a lot of people trust Samsung and SanDisk. I personally like Lexar cards. I think that they hold up really well and they're just a little bit cheaper usually. I've had really good luck and success with those. In terms of its size and weight, it feels very similar to the Ambernic RG353V. One thing that is noticeably different are these triggers. They are like really actually you have to really press down especially on R2 and L2. They seem very stiff or heavy or something like it's really difficult to push down on them. So you're not going to be able to just tap that really quick. You're going to have to put some effort behind it. Let's power it on and see what happens here. This is a Linux based console and it comes pre-packaged with Arc OS, which is a good operating system, but it looks like we're running an older version of it here. It's 2.0, which I believe came out sometime in the spring of 2023. And if this doesn't have working Wi-Fi, then you will not be able to update this. We probably need to check that actually right now. See, it has Scraper set here. But again, if there's no Wi-Fi, then Scraper won't be usable. One thing I do like about ArcOS is that it has a setting for your VRAM limit. You can actually up that so that you have more VRAM available for these games. It can help some games play a little smoother. All right, I can confirm, I guess, that there's no way to input your network into here. There's no network settings anywhere in the main menu, even though it's it says here, has listed here that your Wi-Fi is off. It also says that it's running ArcOS 2.0, which actually came out a lot longer ago than I thought. This came out, looks like April 23rd of 2022, not 2023 at all. So you're looking at a over a year and a half old 
OS, they've made a lot of improvements since then. So it's unfortunate that we can't just do an over the air update. As far as I can tell, that's the only menu settings or settings anywhere that we have. Here's some options. Okay, wait a second. Wi-Fi connections. It will not let me go down to exit out of this. Okay, I guess I'm going to reset because that's not letting me do anything. This is so weird. Update. Looks like update is currently down. <laughs> network info nothing yeah so this is already having like some problems just right out of, out of the gate this is one of the things you're gonna have to sacrifice if you want to save that 40 or 50 dollars you're not gonna have Wi-Fi with this device which means no updates it means no net play it means no scraper to get box art and things and you can look through right here right now at how little box art there is for these games I mean I'm going through NES games right now and there is no box art at all on any of these games. Super Famicom, no box art. Let's see, PC Engine, ah, hey, here's some box art, some screenshots and box art on PC Engine. Looks like we have some for the MAME as well. Hang on a second. This is another thing that you're gonna have to deal with, things that are just misspelled. Let's see if that works. It's got four games in this folder that, <sighs> that's weird, okay. These are the same game, but this one's for two players, this one's for four players, two players and four players. So there's two games in here, I guess, apparently. I just said R35S on that screenshot. <laughs> this is the R36S. The R35S is a different console. Well, this looks good. I mean, the screen, you know, it's got the right colors. The colors are good. This seems to be running correctly, at least so far. Oh, he got me. What was that? What was that? One of the things I like about arcade games on these is that you don't have to keep putting quarters into the machine. <laughs> You can just hit continue as many times as you need to to finish the game. Okay, so on this, if you click the left stick, you get uh, cheats, game history, game information, bookkeeping info, dip switches, game over. All right, closing content. Looks like, oh no, well that was weird. I will say that if you push, pushing the buttons does seem to move the other buttons. I don't really like that. The D-pad isn't as terrible in game as I thought it was gonna be. Let's try some N64, Let's see what we have here. We've got Let's see, 40 Winks, A Bug's Life, Arrow Fighters, Arrow Gauge, All-Star Tennis 99, All-Star Baseball 2001, Army Men, Blues Brothers 2000. <laughs> you do have to really scroll through here. You can't really see what you're doing. It does come with Mario Kart 64. Let's see if that works. R35S, yeah, that's definitely what it says. And this is the R36S. I wonder if it says that on the manual. Let's find out while that loads. Yeah, you see it says R36 manual, and then under that it says RGB20S instruction, which is again, a completely different console from a completely different manufacturer. But this is a clone, that's from Pal Kitty. The R20, RGB20S is from Pal Kitty, and this seems to be a clone of that console. It looks very similar to that console. Okay, Mario Kart. Mario Kart 64 seems to be running actually really smooth. So even though it seems like they've sacrificed a few things to get this at the price point that they wanted it at, the chip they've gone with itself seems to be quite nice. And we pulled off the win right there at the last second. You can see here it comes with 15 Nintendo DS games, Star Wars Episode 3, Super Mario 64, Assassin's Creed, Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars, Lego Batman 2, Lego Harry Potter, and a couple of Lego games here, Mario Kart DS, New Super Mario Bros DS, see how that runs. So you can switch between screens using R2, your upper and lower screen. You can also show both screens with L2, and then you can swap from vertical and horizontal orientations that way as well. Frame rate seems to be smooth so far. The resolution's pretty low. It's probably, I mean, probably the original resolution here. Oh no, messed that up. I will say, even though it's running well, for me, these smaller buttons are, take some, always take some getting used to, but it's running well. To get into the drastic menu, you click L3. That's where you can save and load your games and exit. It's kind of hard to read that text, but that's how you get into it. See here again, like PSP, this would look so much nicer if we could update the OS and add that box art. And you just can't do it because there's no actual Wi-Fi, even though it's on the box. I don't know why they would print that on the box when it's not here. Some of these are the European ROMs, which I think run at a lower refresh rate, which probably helps them run smoother on this chipset. The speaker doesn't sound terrible, and I do like that it's right here in the center because that's going to be facing right at your face and you're never going to cover that up with your palm accidentally with it right there in the middle like that you can hear the slowdown 
Let's see how it goes here. It's running pretty well in game. I'm sure there are some frame drops here and there, but not enough that I can really tell. No. Oh. So yeah, PSP emulation seems to be running pretty well on here. I'm actually kind of shocked. I was not expecting that at this price point. I know a lot of people really like Dreamcast on these things. There's only five games that come with this on Dreamcast. Of course, you can take out the card and add your own ROMs, but uh, there's only five on here to begin with. But we do have Marvel vs. Capcom 2 and Crazy Taxi 2, as well as Dead or Alive 2 and Giga Wings and Legacy of Kane. So those are... Uh, some pretty good choices if you only had to pick five to put on here. Let's see how Marvel vs. Capcom does. It's always a good sign when the company logo comes up and you don't see any frame drops. Alright, fair warning, I'm terrible at fighting games, so this is going to be ugly, but let's just see if the frame does drop any at all. Oh, come on, Hulk. Oh, what was that? How did I do that? <laughs> as far as I can tell, there's no slowdown on this one either. So not only did they give you good ROMs without any corruptions, seemingly, at least not the ones we've tried, seems to be fast enough, the RAM seems to be fast enough, everything's working well. It's just still really unfortunate. You don't get the same control experience as you do on some higher end emulators. Okay, we are getting some slowdown on Crazy Taxi 2. Yeah, we're getting a lot of audio stuttering and a lot of frame skipping on Crazy Taxi 2. Oh, ouch, oh. Wow, watch. Oh, no. Oh, boy. One of the things with these short joysticks is that if you just move a little bit, it's like you overcorrect too much with them because they don't have much room to move. Time's up. All right. So like I said before, this is very similar to the Ambernick RG353V, both in its performance and how it's set up, as well as its size. It comes with a pretty decent selection of games, and all in all, for the price, it's not a bad package. But you are going to lose some things here. That Wi-Fi is a pretty big deal to me. Also, just generally across the board, I don't think any of these controls, but the triggers, the sticks, the d-pad, or the face buttons feel as good as the 353V. I like the audio on here just fine, and these controls are serviceable. They're fine, and I don't think anyone could blame you if you wanted to save a little money and get this instead. But personally, I think that if you just save your money a little longer, the PAL Kitty RGB30, or the Ambernick RG353V would be a much better choice. You'll have better controls and a much cleaner interface, and you'll be able to receive over-the-air updates. But what do you think? Do you like the R36S? Let me know in the comments below. I will have an affiliate link in the description below if you want to pick one of these up and help support the channel at no added cost to you. Please like and subscribe and all that jazz. Thanks for watching. Stay kind and encouraging out there, and I'll catch you on the flippity flip.